Next, we're going to talk a little bit about calculating basically summary statistics on attribute data. So when we look at uh, our attribute tables, one of the things that we can do, uh, it's, it's typically something that you would do as often the first step in data analysis. It gives you an opportunity to think critically about your data and try to understand it. Um, it returns statistics only for what is selected, so it allows you to do things like run queries to pull out subsets of your data and then run statistics just on those subsets. Uh, so there's lots of utility, um, and basically you can just uh, you know, go to your data set, select the field that you're interested in, and then go to your statistics button as is highlighted there in blue, and it will then give you statistics. Believe it or not, it's just that complicated. Now, when we talk about thinking critically, um, sometimes parts of your data can be misleading and can lead to incorrect assumptions or outright inaccuracies in your analysis. Here we have earthquake magnitude data and simply by running the statistics on this and looking at the data you see one of the things, the first things you'll see is this distribution and you'll notice that you have this huge number of zero magnitude earthquakes that doesn't seem to line up with everything else. And it makes you ask critical, important questions. Why are there so many? Why, are, why so few earthquakes between zero and some of those lower numbers like 2.2? And what does this mean in terms of your data analysis? So um, when we summarize tables, we can calculate statistics for groups of features in a table. Uh, we can group by unique fields. We can choose statistics to calculate for other fields, we can produce another table or output of groups. There's just a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, uh, you can calculate, you know, sums or averages or uh, counts. Uh, lots of different things uh, are available within the tool. And, and uh, as you work through the exercises in uh, Price's textbook, uh, you'll become more accustomed to what some of these are. Um, in the previous slide, we looked at the unusual distribution with lots of zero values. Uh, and in that example, what was happening was earthquakes um, that occurred where there was not sufficient instrumentation or there were no instrumentation, or historically they were documented, but there was no um, um, way of uh, estimating the uh, actual uh, magnitude. They were assigned a value of zero. And so that skews your data uh, significantly. And in a situation like that, you would use, um, you know, uh, your your judgment to say, you know, that uh, in order to accurately assess this data set, we need to remove those. And so you could then, for example, do uh, select by attributes to select all the earthquakes over a certain magnitude. That would give you a different subset. You could then export that as a new data set, run statistics on it, and do any number of things. And that's just one example of how you can use this as a means to make better decisions and do better analysis. So how do we summarize things? For example, if we right-click a subregion field uh, and we click the Summarize button, it gives us some options. You select the field you want. Um, you choose one or more statistics to be included in the output. And so you're looking at subregions. And so it's going to look at all the different subregions. And it's going to give you other data. And so you select the field you want and how statistically what you want. Uh, calculated for those and where you want the table to go and then it'll generate that. So for example, um, Mid-Atlantic had three. These count fields are always automatically generated. Uh, so there's three states in the Mid-Atlantic uh, or whatever it was. Uh, there was, and you see the population, that's the total population in that area. Uh, so that's how that would work. Now, uh, could we create a map of population and subregions? No, there are no features because what we made here was a standalone table. That brings us to one of the other things that we often do with tables is join those. And so you could take this states data layer that we have and you could go into your symbolization and Put those together. Um, 
and uh, display it in a certain way. You could then do a join um, where you take your summarized table based on subregions and join it to the subregion data so that when you look at the subregion data you could see things like the count and the total population. And so if you wanted to look at that sum population which is the summarized value you can normalize it by nothing and as I did in this example here and apply a collar ramp and you can see um, which of these subregions are the most heavily populated.